So by working on these five habits, I can promise you that it's going to make you a better footballer who performs better in their matches. I'm going to go over what they are and how to really create these habits for yourself coming up next. So hi there, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer where I am creating videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Now something that's gonna help you do that right now, right away, is getting my free ebook, Game Changer. This is not just a one or two page PDF. This is a full blown 50 page ebook that's gonna help you improve many different areas of your game. You can get that for free down below. Now without further ado, let's go in over what these five habits are. And if you work on all of these things, you can't help but improve yourself and become a better player. The first one is obvious, but it's something that a lot of players don't do, and it's properly taking care of your body. I'm not just talking about your showing up to team training and maybe even doing your individual training. I'm talking about learning how to recover properly, doing the stretching, the foam rolling, maybe the ice baths, if that's something you wanna do, and really learning how to properly recover and heal your body so that you're not only able to practice more intensely and maybe more often, but you're able to be better at, at closer to 100% when you are doing that. This also means working on your fitness. If you're not a fit footballer, you're not going to play well. You know, there's really no two ways about it. If you can only last like, you know, like 20, 30 minutes um, at 100%, it's not going to really work out that well for you. I'm also going to uh, throw sleep in the mix because if you're not getting adequate sleep as a footballer, as an athlete, that's really going to affect your performance. So just make sure you're taking care of your body. It'll go a long way way to helping you be a better player when your body, you're just giving it what it needs, you're helping it recover, and you're just doing everything you can um, in order to make it a well-oiled machine. In fact, in the comments, if it resonates, put down there, I am taking care of my body. And even if you want, list some things you're going to start doing in order to help you do that. Now let's move on to number two. And number two is become a multifaceted player, because I will tell you there's nothing worse than a player that is one-dimensional. When you come up against the player who's one dimensional and you kind of pick up on it five minutes into a game, you really know how to play them. You know, you really know what their weaknesses are right off the bat. And if you become a multifaceted player, not only does it make it harder to mark you or make it harder to get the ball off you or whatever else, it then makes defenders more nervous. Because let's say you are amazing at passing the ball, you're very creative, but you're also amazing one on one. Well, a defender then has to kind of think about both of those things. Like, I can't give him too much space or a passing lane because he's really good at making those passes, but if I do that, he might be able to beat me one-on-one. -on -one. So just having that in their head really makes it more difficult for the defender, makes you more dangerous. And so if you're only good at one thing, you really want to start working on other elements of your game. And I'm going to give you something you can do later in this video that makes you more of an impactful player and to really identify what those things are for you. So if you're enjoying this video so far or anything has resonated with you, hit that like button and we'll move on to number three. So I just kind of alluded to this, but number three is, you know, identify areas you know you can make an impact in and work on those areas. So this includes analyzing your game. So maybe you're a winger, for example, and you've identified, yes, improving my one-on-one -on -one ability and these specific moves is going to help me improve as a player. I worked with a client where we identified a specific type of run he could make after we were looking at his match footage that would help him score more goals and he ended up scoring 10 or 11 more goals goals than he had the previous season because he implemented this advice. Sometimes it could be something that simple. He just started to realize, oh wow, if I get into these certain positions, I will score more goals and have more assists. And it started to happen. So what in your game can you start to add that's going to help you have a bigger impact specific to your position? For example, if you're a striker, it might be, I really need to work on my movement and finishing. And specifically, this one run I've noticed is always on, but just doesn't seem automatic for me. I keep forgetting to do it. So maybe I'll work on that in order to make sure I'm in those positions to score more goals and then just apply this to whatever position you play. Number four is work on the fundamentals all of the time. I harp on about the fundamentals, but because they're so crucial for many different reasons. They're not only the things you're going to use the most often, but it will also improve your confidence massively when you've mastered the fundamentals. Why is this? Because no longer will you be panicking when the ball comes into you and someone applies pressure. 
No longer will you be misplacing those easy passes. It'll also help you to do more advanced things like pass creatively, take players one-on-one, -on -one, be confident in your dribbling ability, get out of tight situations, and so on and so forth. If you work on the fundamentals heavily, often you will gain more confidence on the pitch. You can do the basic stuff well, and players who can do the basic stuff well mixed with a level of confidence and some other things are typically really good players. So look at your fundamentals. What needs some work? What can you add more into your routine to improve it? You know, passing and receiving, for example, is something you should be working on often in my eyes. Dribbling, you know, whatever else it is that you need to work on, but work on these areas often and you will notice an increase in your confidence in games and you'll just notice that you're a better player for doing so. At number five, and this is something so few players do, this is something that if you just start doing it over time, you can't help but get better because it taps into certain laws that basically say, if you do this, you'll get better. And it's analyze your game and be honest with yourself. So many players are not honest with themselves. So many players are caught up in their ego and pride and don't want to look at what they can improve or what they're not doing so well. Um, and that hurts them from becoming better players. And this happens at all levels. I remember a player in college I played with who was a good player, but refused to admit when they had a bad game or certain things they could work on. And therefore, you know, I never remember that player getting better. But if you work on analyzing your game, if you look at your mistakes and don't beat yourself up over them, but look at it and go, okay, so how can I improve upon this? If you look at your strengths and go, how can I make this even better? If you really analyze your game, analyze your performances, analyze your training and identify what you need to work on and then work on those things and then repeat that process, you will improve more and more and more over time. So I would recommend at the very least journaling about your training and your matches and just remembering what happened and what you can work on. You can film yourself, which is going to be even better because then you're going to pick up on things you didn't notice and you can get a coach as well who's going to be honest with you either way. But just make sure whatever you do, you're being honest with yourself. Don't worry about it. You know, don't beat yourself up. There's nothing to feel guilty about if you make mistakes. We all do. But if you make mistakes, analyze it and go, okay, how can I improve this? Discover how you can improve it and then work on it you will become a better and better player. So I actually have a bonus one for you because this is something I've noticed in myself and other players and it's have in-game triggers. One of the things that hurts players, even ones who are already pretty good, is they kind of take themselves out of the game mentally in a lot of different situations. And you'll notice the best players are ones who stay hooked in and tuned into the game pretty much the whole time. And so what I want you to learn is start to learn more about yourself and what keeps you hooked into a game and what knocks you off. For example, some players, when they get too emotional, actually take themselves out of a game. And so they need to learn how to keep their calm and get kind of hooked back in when they become emotional. However, there are players who, when they get emotional, that hooks them back in the game. So learn what it is for you and everything in between and give yourself in-game triggers to snap yourself back into the flow of the game, to tune back into the game and get yourself focused. Again, for you, it might need, be you need to calm yourself down and that's when you play better. For you, it might be, for others, it might be that when you get emotional, you actually are more focused and are better. It doesn't matter which one it is for you, but learn what that is, have in-game triggers, and you'll find yourself playing better. So one habit that players really need to get better at that holds them back as well is losing the ball and being able to keep it. And so if you want to learn how to do that, watch this video next that goes over why most players do lose the ball and how to prevent this and actually make keeping the ball your superpower. So go check it out.